Um, so this course here is going to be a component of your certified green home professional designation. Um, we've also had the basics of residential green building as one of the components we've already completed. And then we're completing two other components, uh, comparing the residential green rating systems and introduction to the Green Star certification, as well as some um, other work that includes uh, reading and a few other items. So make sure you're completing those items and make sure that you're uh, signed up there. Um, if you are a Green Home Institute member, uh, this designation is 100% free for at least for now this year. So get signed up as a member. You can take this designation at no cost. We'll send you one of these mugs as well, corn-based mug sponsored by our board member, uh, True Tech Tools, Bill Spohn. Uh, thanks to him, USA made corn-based mug. And you get instant access to all of our webinars and a lot of other benefits, um, uh, such as supporting our mission to um, uh, help people out, empower people to make more sustainable choices in the renovation and construction of the places we live. Um, and also before we get started, we do wanna give a uh, huge shout out um, to all of uh, everyone who allows us to do what we do, our board of directors, all of our volunteer speakers, our members, uh, nearly 200 members, and our top tier sponsors who have products that are gonna help you meet and beat these green building programs, Mitsubishi Electric, April Air, Ream, and Build Equinox, among many others. Uh, check them out um, if you haven't um, before. All right, so uh, welcome everyone to comparing the residential energy uh, and rating scores. Uh, this course um, is brought to you by us, the Green Home Institute. We're a nonprofit uh, with a mission to empower people to make healthier and more sustainable choices in the places we live. My name is Brett Little. I'm the program manager here at the Green Home Institute. And um, normally I'm the moderator, but today I am uh, the main speaker for this session as well. Uh, this session is approved for many different CEUs as well as our Certified Green Home Professional designation under the Energy and AIA Health, Welfare and Safety, which may make it applicable to your state-based design or contractor license. Um, so we're gonna get started here on comparing the residential green and energy rating systems. There is a massive handout uh, for this normal, it's, 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 it's the slides, it's a bunch of reference energy ratings that we're going to kind of go over a little bit, but you can see them all on yourself. There's a further resource list you can check out. So that handout, uh, for those of you listening live, is being dropped into the chat right now. For those of you listening on demand, you'll be able to find a way to access all those materials um, below, either in the as a handout or in the Thinkific um, in the Thinkific platform. But welcome, and just so you know, uh, again, this is part of our Certified Green Home Professional designation. So as you're going through this course, if you're taking it for that purpose, please make sure you're engaged in answering some of the questions and commentary. And uh, if you're listening to this on demand, make sure you're dropping that over into the chat box. We wanna hear from you still, even um, on the recorded version. So again, as I've mentioned, um, we've completed already uh, with you uh, the basics of residential green building certification. If we haven't, that's okay. You can go back and take those. It's important to know that this session is not a technical session. We're not gonna teach you how to do the energy efficiency items or what they even are. What we're gonna be talking about today throughout this session is, is comparing the different energy rating programs uh, that exist out there. And so, um, so, so if you want to get the items that you need to be doing, the technical information, that's where you want to go back and watch, especially session one, two, and three of the basics of residential green building, where we're going to be talking about in very detail, technical information on energy efficiency, heat pump, solar power, all the things that go into the energy rating. They're all all the, the energy ratings are recipes, and these are the ingredients that we're going to be that we talk about. So go back and watch that. Again, you don't have to you don't have to know about those to know this course. But if you're if you're going through this course and you're scratching your head like, well, what makes an energy rating? That's where you need to go and back and watch those. And then from there, they go into more detail 
on other trainings we've done on all sorts of deep dives into wall assemblies, heat pump systems, solar power, you name it, go check it out. Um, and then again, we'll be giving you further training on our certified green home professional designation. Um, so anyway, uh, we uh, here are the different programs we're gonna be taking a look at today. Um, we've got uh, the US Department of Energy Home Energy Score, we've got Pearl, we've got ASHRAE 90.1, uh, we've got the HERS index rating, um, and then also we've got a guest speaker today. I'm super excited to have her, uh, Lisa White, if you want to pop in and say hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, she's with uh, the Passive House Institute US, so she's going to be speaking to the WUFI uh, program. And then we're briefly going to mention Passive House Planning Package uh, uh, in context as well. Um, so she's going to be kind of popping in just to make sure that we kind of get Passive House right, because I certainly know a little bit about it, but not that much. So I'm excited that she could join. And also she joined last minute after being at FiusCon last week uh, in person, big conference there. I'm, I'm sad I couldn't make it. But I'm super excited and thankful that she, uh, that you, Lisa, could you could join us, uh, especially after everything, <laughs> after yeah. catching your breath from PSCon. So yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, welcome. So real quick before we get started, I'd like to hear from you all. I'm going to open up a real quick poll here, and why don't you just take it, take a second to take it. What programs have you used before? So really, we're talking about the big programs. There's all sorts of energy programs out there. Really, you know, everyone and their friend uh, has an energy rating program, right? You can call up a local energy auditor, a home inspector. You can call up your local weatherization contractor. They all have their own energy auditing system, right? They all will generate a rating for you. Oh, and, you know, it's, it's the Wild West out there. So what these programs are doing is they're trying to bring some uniformity and some regulation, really. So we're all speaking the same language and we're getting closer, but there's still a lot of programs out there. These are the big ones. These are the well-known ones. These ones are tied to government programs and incentives and utility rebates and codes. So you might say, yep, you know, my friend created an energy rating program and it's 95% accurate. You know, that's great. Have them join one of these working committees because we don't need any more energy rating programs. <laughs> uh, and so that's why, you know, these are the ones that we're going to be um, focused on. So we've got some of the information back here. I'm going to end the poll real quick and share out the results. It looks like our friends at the HERS uh, ResNet uh, are our clear winner here. 61% of you just under shy energy star under that. And then the rest are all kind of small. I see a good bump in Passive House. That's really cool. Uh, and I see a lot of others. Again, that's probably, uh, or, or none, right? I, we couldn't, we could only put so many questions on here. We probably should have separated other and none. So either you, a, a big chunk of you have used none, or you've all used your friend's rating system that they came up with. Uh, Cause I know your friend has one. So, <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, clearly, a lot of you know about HERS index, so we'd love to hear from you as we're going through this on what your thoughts on the HERS index rating are, if you can share anything with us. So if you think back to the, um, uh, the, uh, the, the, the training we did, right, with the basics of residential green building, what we've done is we went through something called the energy efficiency pyramid, where on sort of the bottom of the pyramid, you have some of the easy do-it-yourself friendly things that you as a homeowner or your clients can do on their own, all the way up to the things that cost more, but save more that require more work. So all these things, again, are a recipe that get thrown into your energy rating soup and spit out uh, and some kind of metric and energy use per year. Uh, and again, we're not going through these items today, but we, will, uh, we do cover them back in the basics of residential green building program under the energy pathways. Um, so first up is the home energy score. This is the Department of Energy home energy score. This was launched in 2010 under the um, Obama administration uh, as a Department of Energy rating program. 
think of it this way. It's basically a miles per gallon label for existing homes every day, someday in the future, just like a car, every home will have an MPG rating. It may be this one. That's kind of the idea. It's a federally backed program. It's monitored by the Department of Energy. There's nearly, I just learned yesterday, almost 170,000 rated homes um, under this program. And it's basically a one through 10 rating with one being the worst performing home, 10 being the best. And that shifts based on your climate zone. So this, this, this system is trying to compare local homes. So if you're in the market to buy a home and you see one has a five, one has a one, one has a 10, all things being equal, you're gonna say, well, if I can buy the one that has a 10, it's gonna use less energy. So it's just meant to be simple. But it's also accurate. Our own internal data shows on a study we did 90% accuracy to real utility data. I think the DOE uh, shows about an 80% accuracy. Ironically, that accuracy drops as you get warmer and warmer, and it gets tighter as you get colder and colder climates for whatever reason, I don't know. So we did our study in Holland, Michigan, climate zone 5A, somewhat cold and found about 90% accuracy utilizing this software to real utility data uh, on this program. Conversely, we've got our friends Pearl, who is an existing home and can be used on new construction program. This rates on a good, better, best, similar to LEED. You got certified Pearl, you've got uh, silver, gold, and platinum rating. Again, just like LEED, but it's 100, nearly 100% 100 focused on energy efficiency and it's prescriptive in nature. So it is not a performance. It's not going to give you an energy use metric per year by any means. Pearl's biggest claim to fame is how they integrate with the realty and appraisal in industry. That's really where they shine in helping understand people understand the basics of how their home is performing, why insulation improves their home, HVAC. They really give good details, good marketing for the realtors and they help create a, a green appraisal addendum to give the appraisers some information on what they need to know. And again, a lot of you already know this one, ResNet. Um, ResNet, uh, Residential Energy Services Network. It's a nonprofit agency who basically, who, who runs a program that was created by the Environmental Protection Agency called the HERS Index Rating. Millions and millions of homes, especially new construction and low-rise multifamily buildings, but even renovations are getting certified to this. I think the last I checked, a fourth of all new residential projects in the country are receiving this rating system on the new construction side. It's huge. And the higher you go up the scale, unlike uh, uh, the, this is the opposite of, our, of, the, of the home energy score where higher is better. Lower is better here, where you go up the scale here up to 150 or higher. You're talking about old buildings that perform really poorly, old, you know, old single family or multifamily buildings. And then you go lower down the scale and you're talking about better performance, 1% better than code all the way down to net zero. It's important to know that unlike the HERS index rating, which is based on peer energy use per year, the HERS index rating is based on energy use per year per square foot, and you throw in cost calculations of estimates of gas and electric rates. So um, for example, in many cases, we see inflated electric rates across the country. I know they are where I am. And we see depressed gas rates. Well, maybe not right now. I guess that's changing <laughs> as I'm speaking. But overall, you know, we see, we see that. So what ends up happening is, you know, you can have a home with a better HERS rating because it's using gas instead of electric in certain territories. But if you peel back the onion a little bit and actually look at the energy years per year, if you look at the carbon emissions, you might actually have a home that has a better HERS index, but worse energy use because of how the rating itself is tied to um, cost and not use or carbon emissions. Whereas the home energy score is tied to peer energy use. So you'll always have a better score if your energy use uh, uh, is better disconnected from cost. So we see that as a concern for all electric projects using the HERS rating. Um, you might wanna peel that onion back and we'll get into those reports a little bit. 
Also, larger homes tend to fare better in this because it's an energy, it's an EUI program, use per square footage. Smaller homes tend to be more punished by this. So another drawback or benefit, depending on where, how you look at it. Uh, so again, they're working on fixing that and including a home size adjuster into the program. But it's one other thing um, you need to be considering when you're looking at using the HERS index rating uh, for, uh, to make an informed decision. Um, ASHRAE is the most well-known globally accepted program. HERS index can be used outside of this country, but you have to kind of fudge the numbers a bit. Um, ASHRAE is globally accepted. This is a program uh, that requires in-depth in energy modeling uh, and it generates uh, a, a, a and, it, and, it, and it changes every year, which we'll get into um, based on the year's code or based on the, so there's an ASHRAE uh, 2007, 2010, 2013, 2016, 2019, I think. Um, and so it just gets more aggressive each year and then uh, similar to the HERS index, you have a percentage better than ASHRAE all the way down to 100% better than ASHRAE, which would in theory be a net zero building. And again, this is a program that's delivered by typically mechanical contractors, engineers, large architecture firms. They're pretty in-depth energy models. And again, it's globally accepted, it's globally adopted. Um, and so that's one of its biggest claim to fame. Um, and then also we have, um, and I, uh, we also have Passive House. There's uh, Passive House Institute, uh, FI, which is the international or German standard, and then Passive House US. These employ WUFI, uh, which is Passive House US, and then Passive House Planning Package through Passive House Institute. Also, again, global standards, both of them. Um, and so, uh, Lisa, I'll have you come in and just briefly introduce us to um, these programs and sure. yeah, please take it away. Sure. So I'll start with FIAS. So I'm part of FIAS, the Passive House Institute US. And um, as Brett mentioned, we use Wolfie. It's called Wolfie Passive as our modeling compliance tool. And the actual certification is called FIAS certification. So like a like a HERS rating, it's called it would be called being FIAS certified. Um, it is a performance-based standard with some prescriptive requirements. So ultimately, what FIAS is aiming at is using passive building strategies to reduce space conditioning loads, heating and cooling loads, and we set absolute targets for that, and it's a climate specific. So you have different targets for heating and cooling depending on where you are, um, and building size and occupant density. So they're kind of custom tailored for your projects. And then we also have absolute targets for overall energy use in the building, and we rate that based on source energy. So the HERS rating is a site energy kind of utility bill, or sorry, the home energy rating is more of a site energy rating. And that, that's what shows up in a utility. We take into account also the fuel sources used and kind of the total um, upscale emissions from that or uh, the backward emissions, how much fuel actually had to go in at the source to get it to the site. Um, so that is FIAS in a nutshell. And then the for performance ratings, it's space conditioning target, source energy target. And then we have a bunch of prescriptive elements, um, which I think there might be a slide in here later. Uh, if you could go back, sorry. Um, there might be a slide in here later with the high performance staircase, but like zero energy ready home, energy star uh, and EPA under our plus, all of those program requirements are built into our program as well as other things like ventilation commissioning, air tightness. Um, and then the other program are actually into level set. A lot of people were familiar with hers. We, HERS ratings are required for all residential dwelling units for FIAS and roughly where the FIAS projects end up is around a 36. That's the average HERS score for a, a FIAS certified project. The other logo you saw up there was for the Passive House Institute. Uh, that is for the, the German Passive House standard. They do also have a certification program similar in concept, but it is not climate and building size specific. Um, it is it is tailored mostly to the German climate, and it is not built on U.S. programs, so they don't have prerequisites for Energy Stars, Your Energy Ready Home, Indoor or Plus, or her scores. So um, the U.S. standard is just much more tailored to North America. Um, and then, uh, yeah, you can go to the next one now. But uh, Woofy is the name of the tool. 
Uh, but Wolfie is really a software family. So this gets confused a lot. Wolfie is just the tool we use for compliance. So if you use the Wolfie tool with FIAS modeling protocols, you can certify a building to FIAS, but technically the tool can stand alone as well. And there's different versions of Wolfie. We use Wolfie passive for FIAS certification, but you can see there's also Wolfie tools that are used a lot in the construction industry for individual building components. So like walls, roofs, assessing moisture performance. Um, that's the, the tool on the left. And then on the right, there's other tools that are for the whole building. So um, we basically combine the tools on the, the left into a whole building model for um, our certification compliance. I think that's a that's my start over, overview, Brett. All right, great. Thanks, Lisa. Um, so Energy Star certification, I'm going to briefly talk about it because it's not a rating program per se, but it is an energy program. And it sort of fits in this hot, weird hybrid world um, between you know, energy rating and green programs, which we'll be talking about in the next session. Um, energy Star in and of itself is really more of an energy efficiency prescriptive program with a performance target of hitting a HERS index rating of somewhere around 70-ish. It floats around based on bedroom square footage sizes. It also requires HVAC commissioning and design, um, proper sizing, and um, it used to have a water management component, that, but that was thrown out. And so also we've got on the flip side, we've got the Energy Star High Rise program, which has all sorts of other details for high rise buildings uh, that are related to prescriptive items. And then we've got the new Energy Star multifamily new construction program, which is really designed as that sweet spot for more middle of the road, mid-rise buildings that are more residential in nature. And so the multifamily new construction program allows the ASHRAE standard to get used on smaller buildings, like two-story buildings. Um, and then it allows the HERS index rating to get used on any size multi-building. Um, which we'll get into, I guess we should have probably covered where, what size buildings these are used on before we got to this slide now that I think about it, but that's okay. Uh, what it basically allows is, what I want to make the point is it allows multifamily new construction is going to allow for large multifamily buildings or small multifamily buildings more choice. It's also important to know that Passive House um, requires Energy Star certification for the US version as a baseline. Um, now, taking that one step further, the Department of Energy has launched a zero energy ready program. This program requires Energy Star certification and it requires a HERS index rating of somewhere around 45 or lower. It floats around a little bit too, depending on the project. So, again, this is not a net zero program. This is a program that requires an energy component to it. It requires an indoor air quality component, a water component, a component of ensuring you have uh, the building ready to go for solar in the future um, when it makes sense for the client. And also again, Passive House has hitched itself to this program requiring that. And we have a whole webinar on this, but they are updating to version two next year. So we're hoping to have the Department of Energy on next year in 2022 to go over the version two of the Zero Energy Ready program. So Lisa, you were alluding to this slide earlier. Uh, I put it here because I thought it was more relevant. I really like how it kind of showcases the code, 2009, 2012, and then Energy Star 3, and then 3.1, by the way, there is there are states that have adopted Energy Star 3.1, um, which is a little more, I wouldn't say necessarily stringent, but uh, some ways stringent, but then also more flexible, just depends on which state you're in, like Michigan is a 3-1 state. And so you can just see the sort of requirements that go into each of these items. And then I really like how you can see Passive House builds on top of that, and then Passive House Source Zero, which we'll talk about later, and I have a slot for that when we talk about Net Zero and how these programs fit into Net Zero. So it's a nice little, just kind of tells you, you know, how you need to sort of build up um, from there. So 
So this is what we call the home energy use pyramid. And basically, again, these all these items are like ingredients that get thrown into the into the recipe. Uh, and the recipe is sort of the energy label or the scores output. So again, we're not talking about these today. We break them all down in the basics of residential green building, and then they get broken down further in many different sessions we've done or sessions we plan to do. We'll, we'll always deep dive into all these items individually. So it's important to know that the home energy score is an asset rating. And so all of these in some sense are an asset rating, but what the score is, is it's just saying, look, we don't care about the small things that can be changed easily. We don't care about appliances or lighting or ventilation. And we certainly don't care about human behavior. We only care about these items that we can't change. And so that's why it's kind of broken down there. And then you look at the other rating programs, ASHRAE, WUFI, PEARL, uh, the HERS index rating, those are starting to take into account the lighting that goes in, the appliances efficiencies, the ventilation systems. And to some extent, they even look at behavior and the tools themselves allow you to alter behavior on some of these sessions. So for example, in ASHRAE, you can alter how many occupants are in certain buildings or certain rooms. In the HERS index rating, you can alter temperature set points as one example. Um, so again, you can kind of play around with these things and see what would happen to the rating if you were to do that. Um, so Lisa, I'm gonna pick on you again because one thing that's really cool, especially about Woofy, is the idea that you can you, you can sort of take advantage of the sun. The HERS index rating has that to some extent too, but mostly we see people stay away from the, the solar, uh, passive solar kind of shading within that program. Um, but I know for sure, Woofy and, and Passive House. So can you speak to that real quick, Lisa? Yeah, sure. So when the loads get low enough in the buildings, like they do with passive buildings, solar gain can make a pretty big impact. Uh, so accurately and in a deep, uh, we assess shading in a very detailed manner, basically. Um, so you have to look at the appropriate amounts of solar gain on all the different windows. And I can't really speak to what the PHI or Passive House Institute in Germany uses, but I know in Woofy Passive, you can integrate the site shading into your geometry and essentially run a shading tool and it can assess uh, the solar exposure for all of the different glazing um, in for each month. And it's a monthly base balance based tool. So that's the amount of resolution you need. Thanks. And then can you stick around just a quick talk about how sure. occupancy gets covered in, in passive or woofy? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think this is true of both passive house methodologies, but someone correct me if I'm wrong. Um, basically, there's predefined assumptions for occupants use of different appliances. If the appliance does exist in the building, you can change it if you want, but um, it would you'd have to get pretty deep into it to change that. And I don't think you could do that for certification. So basically it would say a person uses the dishwasher X amount of times per year, and you would put in the energy rating of that dishwasher. So it would figure out how much energy that would use over the course of the year. And I, I do know for FIAS, we do enter occupancy based on number of bedrooms plus one. So if it's four bedrooms, we'd say there's five people. And then um, also for FIAS, we have fixed assumptions about miscellaneous electric loads in the building based on the number of people and the floor area of the space, as well as fixed assumptions about lighting in the space um, that are just required to use for certification. And they're based on, uh, they're actually the same as ResNet, the same calculations as what's built into the HERS rating program, except we took a 20% reduction from those numbers. So we thought those were a little inflated and we, we took them down, but it's the same, same exact formula, just a little bit lower. Great, thank you, Lisa. Mm -hmm. um, so I was briefly getting to this a little bit, but you know, each of these programs um, makes sense for certain type of projects. Um, and some can or cannot be used on certain types of projects. So you can kind of see we go from sort of small single family to mid-rise, low-rise to uh, high-rise and mixed use on the right there. And so the small single family stuff really makes sense for home energy score and Pearl, especially existing. They're really made for that. If you try to do a new construction on uh, Home Energy Score and Pearl, you typically score the highest because it's just, because it's they're already so efficient due to the code, though that depends on your local state or county or jurisdiction or 
when your building inspector wakes up on the wrong side of the bed code, because I know sometimes the code's based on that too, uh, depending on where you live. But anyway, so that, you know, and then the HERS index rating clearly is a single family program, but it's also, I've got it sort of the resonant there where it is, we're seeing it on a lot of low rise, two, three story. We're seeing four and five story use it. We've seen it, we've gotten approved a couple six story. And again, through the multifamily new construction program, we can certify potentially the sky's the limit. It really just depends on the quality assurance and the HERS rating uh, agency body as to what they want to certify or not. And then conversely with uh, ASHRAE 90.1, um, that is looking at certifying um, um, uh, 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 the buildings. And there's a lower, and, the, and as many, if some of you are mentioning in the chat, yes, there is a residential standard. We're not going to dive into that too in depth here, but 90.1 still is used uh, as a means for um, these ratings for commercial because all of these residential buildings, um, when they become two or three stories, they get permitted as commercial buildings. So that's important to remember that. So again, you know, you're usually looking at four stories as sort of your floor for ASHRAE 90.1. Uh, and especially if there's mixed use in the building, ResNet cannot do mixed use buildings um, through the HERS rating. Um, you could try to score it and try to get some assumptions, but it's just, you can't really get the, that data. So that's why 90.1 makes sense for the whole building, especially when there's mixed use space in it. Um, but again, through multifamily new construction, it gives you a viable pathway for 90.1 on your three and two story buildings if you love doing it that way. And then of course, Passive House, despite its name, which is a, you know, a really bad name <laughs> because both Passive Houses, um, and sorry, it's not a bad name, Lisa. What I mean to say is it doesn't oh, no, I get convey it. <laughs> the fact that you can do um, commercial with it in large buildings. So can you just speak to a little bit on that, Lisa? <laughs> Yeah, so um, basically Brett asked me to cover that this applies to all building types. So yeah, passive, in general, passive building strategies and principles can be applied to all building types and all climates all over the world and, and save energy, right? So um, the certification programs, both with VIAS and the PHI, apply to all building types and all climates. Um, and these are just some examples of uh, larger scale projects, some of these which are actually under construction, the one in the top left under construction in New York City now. Um, so it's not a single family home. Um, it's not limited to single family home by any means. It, it really applies to all building types and sizes and scales. Yeah, thank you, Lisa. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so moving on, um, next we're gonna be taking a look at um, di diagnostics and testing tools for these different programs. And so first up, we've got blower door testing. Uh, HERS index rating requires blower door testing. Um, uh, the home energy score allows you to bypass blower door testing by selecting whether the building is tight or not. And it's not ideal. Most people don't do that, but it does allow you to bypass it. Pearl, uh, if you want to get to their gold certification, you must do blower door testing in order to achieve the gold certification um, within Pearl. Uh, I believe you can still use the data on silver and below um, in, the, in the rating, but you must achieve it. Now, Woofy and Placid House Planning, in and of themselves, as Lisa reminded me, are just tools, so they don't require you to do anything. But um, Passive House itself, of course, to certify um requires that you have a blower door done there's certainly no um exceptions there and ashray 90.1 could care less about blower door testing i think you can actually input some of the data you achieve through blower door testing but it is not um part of the system at all um as far as duct leakage testing goes um, again, uh, home energy score allows you to grade the duct tightness based on reviewing it. Uh, 90.1 allows you to do that as well through ASHRAE. Uh, I think Pearl might have something in there for that too. Uh, HERS index basically requires it unless you meet an exception of having all of your ducts within condition space 
and the building is below a certain tightness of two ACH or lower, depending on climate zone. So there are some exceptions there. Um, and again, woofy and passive house planning in and of themselves are just tools. So they can't mandate this, but the this passive house certifications are gonna require duct blaster testing to be done on them. Um, ventilation testing. Um, so there are no inputs in home energy score for ventilation testing. There are inputs in ASHRAE for it, but it, um, it can be used, but it's not required. You can just review the specifications and use the settings. You don't have to actually input the testing data into ASHRAE. Uh, HERS index is the same way. You can just review the specifications and put in the testing data. And one flaw of the HERS index rating is if you've got multiple ventilation systems, such as um, a range hood, bath fan and ERV, you can only put one in there. So it's, it's, it's a downside. There might be some workarounds. And if there's HERS Raiders on here shouting at me right now, feel free to do so. But <laughs> there's, there's probably some workarounds there. But um, now, depending on who your HERS provider is, and I can tell you, I know this firsthand, and I'm not going to name any names, some are going to mandate that you have ventilation testing done to get a HERS rating. And others are just going to allow you to put in the specification that was written by the HVAC contractor. So it just depends on who your HERS provider is. Um, you know, that's just honesty there. Uh, it may not be what the letter of the law is. I'm just telling you the way I see it. So um, that's one thing to look at. But passive house itself, again, through the WUFI standard is gonna be requiring that you have that ventilation, those ventilation tests done and all your ventilation systems to help inform the energy modeling. And then to take it one step further, um, Passive House also through the roofing rating system is requiring that you do the hot water test. So you're basically trying to figure out how fast you get hot water to determine you know, how efficient the, the, the plumbing system is as far as water flow rates. Um, so we have other webinars where we go over that test. Um, so you can check those out. But that's another thing you'll need um, to input into Woofy. And I think REMRATE might have some inputs for that, but I'm not entirely uh, sure on that. So, um, and then just so another thing to remember is that programs that actually give out scores. So we're not talking about energy usage. We're talking about some sort of badge or score that you can get. So here's a home energy score again, one through 10. ASHRAE is a percentage better than ASHRAE. And you have to be, you have to know which year it is too. So it's a percentage better than 2010, 2013, 2016. Pearl gives out a score based on a good, better, best rating badge of gold, silver, platinum, you name it. And the HERS index rating is a percentage better than code of energy efficiency all the way down to zero. Uh, also, these programs give out energy use per year, per month projections. And so most of all these systems besides Pearl give out some sort of idea on how much energy you're using within some sort of period of time. And I believe even HERS index now is getting down to hourly, which is really important if we're trying to match our grid to 100% renewable energy on the grid, which is uh, and time of use programs. Lisa, do you know if Woofy or Passive House Planning are looking into or are looking into like hourly data reports? Um, I'll say yes in short. Um, yeah. I do know the, the source energy or the primary energy metrics for the Passive House Institute in Germany kind of takes into account 100, a 100% renewable future. So it's trying to take into account the time of use of the different end uses. So when you're using heating versus hot water and what the impact of that would be on the renewable grid. Um, I'd say both programs are very aware of these things and um, trying to get closer to alignment with, with where we need to be. Yeah. Great, thank you. So let's take a look at the software that's driving these programs. Um, the HERS index rating, uh, is currently driven by three different softwares. There could be more, but I know it can be very expensive to get into. Um, 
so there's um, Remrate, which was sort of the biggest one that really led the market until Ecotrope came along and I believe has now dominated the market. And then down in Florida, you've got the Energy Gauge program, which is mostly just used down there, but you know, also um, across the country. So these are the, some of the different softwares that can be used um, to produce this score. And then you have to sign up with a software provider. And some have um, certain advantages over the other. One thing that I really like about Remrate is they have something called Rem Design. Uh, architect or designer can use Rem Design <clears throat> to complete a, a project and then zip it over to an energy rater. Uh, Remrate also has Rem Light uh, as well, which can be used to determine again uh, where you're coming at and make it less of a mystery box or black box program. A builder can use it or an architect can use it and actually pull energy reports. Um, Energy Gauge actually is kind of affordable so that they allow you to basically license it and do that if you're not an energy rater. Ecotrope, on the other hand, you know, has a higher price tag to it. So not, and they don't have a separate architect or designer program that you could, that you could uh, in theory use to see how your designs are doing it. You know, it's important to know that if you're not a certified rater, you cannot produce certified ratings. It's just that a lot of times these rating systems become mystery boxes. And so each of these softwares, especially REM rate, uh, give you some different tools to feel more confident that you're headed in the right direction with your designs before you hire your, um, uh, you know, your energy uh, rater. Uh, ASHRAE 90.1, you know, really you, you know, are looking at a lot of different softwares for this. It is a whole heap of softwares that just kind of blew my mind as I was doing some uh, research before I uh, went on and did this uh, on how many softwares there are out there. What I wanted to do was use the one that was qualified for the Department of Energy's rebate program, because this is money, right? This is real money here. So take a look at all these softwares here, Design Builder, and then they kind of tell you which one is allowed to be used for the tax rebate, which we'll get into. DES, DOE 2.2, Energy Gauge, we see that one a lot. Energy Plus, we see that one a lot. EQuest. Look at all these different softwares that can generate a 90.1 label. It's just mind boggling a little bit. Um, and so you can just see uh, all the stuff that out, is out there. You can check out which one you want to do. And again, if you're working on a lot of multifamily projects, you may want to pick one of these or the other one um, for you or your client, depending on you know what it is your your goals are um, for your projects. And then, Lisa, can you just talk to us a little bit about? Um, the Woofy and Passive House Planning Pack, which sure. softwares, are there other ways to generate uh, things or is it really just through these two for Passive House? It is for these two. Um, so each of the Passive House programs has their own modeling tool. And what I really wanted to point out here is there's just a differentiation between the tool and the, the protocol. So essentially it's just an energy model with the Passive, Woofy Passive or PHVP. And you can put similar inputs into both and get similar outputs, but um, the, the certification program is actually FIAS or PHI. And that requires you to kind of use the tools in different ways. And they have different, um, I guess, protocol for modeling. So the, the tool itself is called Wolfie Passive. You could model a code compliant building Wolfie Passive. Something that has nothing to do with FIAS. It's just a tool. It's just an energy model for a building. Same thing with PHVP. But when you apply um, the protocols and then also meet the performance targets, that are set by the representative organization, that's when you get the certification compliance. So I just wanna make sure there's a clear distinction between the tool and the certification program um, that the tool is modeling to meet. And you know, for those who wanna kind of get their feet wet, doesn't Woofy allow designers or even builders some kind of access to kind of see, hey, if I were to do a passive house, how close would my project come before you know before they go yeah. through all the hoops <laughs> yeah yeah uh, there's you can do a feasibility study there are there's a free version of Wolfie passive out there um this is coming up in the q a so i might mention it here uh Fius has also recently introduced a prescriptive path so if you are a builder or an architect that's new to this uh this is and work on single family residential 
It is a limited scope residential path and you could kind of get a snapshot of what it would take for your single family residence to get to what would be a certifiable FIAS project. Um, and I set, I'll send a link in the chat. I've sent some in the q and I'm not sure who can see everything. So um, thought yeah, I'd please, that. please share anything you want or answer any questions in there, Lisa, on Passive House. We appreciate your help. So, um, and then it's important to know with these tools that, um, in my opinion, many of them have the inputs to create heat load calculations. And unfortunately, sadly, some of them don't. Uh, and I don't know why, because it's just another another piece of software someone's got to run. So anyway, we're, you know, the energy gauge actually can create uh, certified manual J version eight. I believe Ecotrope is working on that through the HERS index software. And then Woofy, I, Lisa, are, I know you can, you get your load calculations on Woofy. Are those certified manual J version eight? They're not. No. Okay. So that, that's a co-requisite requirement for Okay. projects to complete. Yep. Yeah. So you still got to get those generated. And I think passive house planning package also does heat load. Even if it doesn't generate a certified rating, I think what's important to know is what I've noticed with some of these softwares, like even REM rate, they generate a heat load calc that you can use to fact check the manual J uh, version eight. Because a lot of times your HVAC will give you one that's a bit bogus because it's oversized. And so you can use these software tools to sort of QA that and just see if you're on track. I, it, anecdotally speaking, I have found you know res, rem rate to be hyper accurate to most of the well thought out manual J's that were done. So, and I see you're unmuted, Lisa. I don't know if you had anything to add. Uh, to that. No, I was just going to say yes. That um, <laughs> yes, I agree with what you just said. And uh, there's a comment here. And thanks for joining us, Tim. I know you know a lot, so I appreciate you joining us saying passive house modeling software results are much more accurate than other tools. So yeah, absolutely. Use those passive house tools um, for the heat load calcs and everything else to, to get your accuracy. So <laughs> yep. um, training. So um, when it comes to training and credentialing, there are programs that offer training there are programs that mandate training. And so it just depends on how you look at it. If you wanna use the home energy score tool, you can use it, right? You can start certifying all your projects today, um, new and existing single family projects. The only thing is, is you have to go through a full blown training. You have to go online, take a course, and then you have to go play a video game and slay the HVAC furnace in the basement, right? People have joked with me, they're like, Brett, I don't play video games. Why do I have to do this? It's the only way. You got to take a simulation and go and energy audit a home in, in a simulator. And then you have to get some mentorship done. So that's all available for free. We can set you up for that as a home energy score partner. If you want to start scoring all your homes, uh, that's easy. And you can use it to make informed decisions right now. Again, the HERS index rating has a HERS associate that we hope to offer. Many other folks like EBA offer it. That's sort of to help get your feet wet. And then um, from there, the HERS index uh, requires that you go through a formal HERS rater training that requires either, um, there's a lot of it's done online now, so you can take it all online, take a test. And then there is a mentorship component uh, required as well uh, to, to become a formal HERS index rater and utilize the HERS software to actually make ratings done. Um, ASHRAE 90.1 has trainings available. It has a credential now available, but it is not required to do any of that to produce a rating because there is no body overseeing the rating system or the software, uh, in the sense that somebody's watching what you're doing. So anyone can create a, can create a 90.1 label. It just depends on what you use it for, but there is now, they have created credentials for that. Um, and then also the Pearl system really has to go through them. You have to create a partnership with Pearl. So again, there's not any specific training or credential that I'm aware of through Pearl. Lisa, can you tell us a little bit about Woofy and Passive House and what kind of trainings and credentials are involved for that? Yeah, uh, I'll start with the rating because you mostly talked about that. So we have FIA certified raters who do the same thing as HERS raters and um, having the HERS rating designation is actually a prerequisite to take the FIA certified rater training. Uh, we have one of those actually coming up in a few weeks if you are a HERS rater and interested. 
and passive house training. Uh, we also certify consultants or designers for the project. So those are the ones that learn to use the modeling tools, Wolfie Passive or um, PHP in the case of PHI. Uh, and those are usually architects, engineers, energy consultants, people involved in the design of the project. And then we also have a training for builders, uh, FIA certified builders, which are you know the GCs, the people actually executing on site. And we have another designation that's not as relevant to this training, but it's the FIA certified verifier. And that is more applicable to larger buildings outside of single family homes. Mm -hmm. So multifamily buildings, or commercial buildings, the people doing the on-site quality assurance, just like a Raider would for a single family home. And those are all, yeah, professional designations and the Raider or verifier is required on any certified project. Thank you, Lisa. Mm -hmm. um, so let's take a look up, um, at some of the outputs here. And um, we've got some handouts that we gave you that really go into detail into multiple pages that you can take a look out on your own free time. I'm just gonna briefly go over um, a couple of them here. So first we've got the Department of Energy um, Home Energy Score. So you can open that one up and follow along with me if you'd like, or just, um, watch my screen um, as well. Um, but here it is. So this is sort of an example report. And again, um, we're talking about a, you know, a one through 10 rating system. So when you go to score a home, the idea is that you do a test in on an existing home and you get a score and it tells you, you know, it gives you a 10 year return on investment on that score. Here's how much money it costs to operate before you do the work here after. Here's how much energy before you do the work here's after. It's almost like a home inspection, but focused around energy efficiency. It breaks down KBTU square foot, cost per square foot, how that's estimated in kilowatts and therms and all of that. And again, just like a home inspection, it's kind of detailing what's going on in the home, the year it's built, all the features that you would use to assess energy efficiency, gives you a nice little report, breaks down uh, where all that energy is going, where that cost is going, how that cost is broken out by electricity and natural gas. Um, keep going down again, you can just see the details of the report and the roofing and the attic, the foundation details, wood frame detail, uh, wall frame, uh, window ratios and square footages, window types, um, you can see HVAC systems and efficiencies and types of HVAC. Uh, are the duct systems insulated or not? Um, how many HVAC systems are there? Hot water. Um, and it even has a solar component too. And then it spits out a page of recommendations, things that you might want to repair now, and then things you might want to repair in the future and what you should use to do it. And so that's how you get to that score of two is by following or whatever score, it'll spit out a it's sort of an artificially intelligent um, list of recommendations to repair an existing home. Or if you're building a new home, it will give you that. But it's nearly impossible on a new home because you're already going to be at a 10, most likely, depending on your local code. So unfortunately, it won't do that. Now, you as the assessor or the rater can override these recommendations and create your own list of improvements that you like better. And that's OK. Uh, and then it will give an updated score based on whatever that is. Uh, it's important to know that this thing will never fuel switch. So if you're trying to help your clients go all electric, if they've got gas currently, you're going to have to superimpose a heat pump system because this will never, ever fuel switch, at least not yet. But we have been asking DOE for that. And they did say yesterday to me on a call that maybe they will do that. So, hey, that was better than no than last time. So... Um, and again, here's just an example of a report, uh, sort of, you know, post-construction, you know, maybe you get up to a seven. And then what I also like about um, this report is that it gives you a comparison of, um, oh, well, we didn't make it. So there was supposed to be a handout with a comparison of, uh, oh, uh, comparing the, the two different uh, pre and post. Unfortunately, we didn't make it to you. Uh, it looks like I missed it, but I will make sure to send that out um, at a later time. All right, moving on to the home energy rating certificate. So again, you've got um, 
the uh, the the HERS index rating here. And again, it's giving you lots of details, just like the home energy score. Some things that are a little bit different is it's going to give you ventilation details, um, and it's going to give you appliance details that you won't find on the home energy score report. Plus, you're going to get a better breakdown on your energy use by heating, cooling, hot water, lighting, and appliances. Uh, Energy Star certification ratings. Um, one thing that I really like about this program and all many other programs is when you're in the early design stage, this is key right here to try to figure out, okay, where are we using energy during the heating season and cooling season? And whether you're certifying or getting an official rating or not, just set all that aside for a second. Here is where you really get to work with your client um, or your project. Um, and you can kind of see, look, you know, our above grade walls are just sucking up a ton of energy uh, in the heating season and our ventilation and our infiltration, like what's going on here. So you can really make informed decisions on how to build a better project for you and your client. If you're trying to get a better rating or go for a green certification, this is where you know you need to start tackling these other areas. Of course, that's in context with the cost to do it. And also these days, does the product even exist anymore? Is it stuck on a ship somewhere <clears throat> outside of San Francisco? So those are all things you have to keep in mind in the context of what you're doing. Um, again, you're getting, uh, you know, does it meet Energy Star 3? Does it meet LEED? You get a whole nice LEED report from uh, HERS index rating. You get a whole big building summary that just breaks down all the details for you of what's going on. And this is a good thing to QA during a specification and project plan review, just to make sure this matches what's on the plan review. Because if it's off, your energy model might be off when you go to do a real model. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, these are, these are just all some of the things you will get <clears throat> from um, an energy uh, uh, rating. And then let's take a look at the... Um, uh, the, the Pearl as well, briefly. Um, so the Pearl report starts out with this nice certificate, uh, of certification. Um, if you're, if you're getting certified and then you get this nice little description, um, and infographics about all these different systems to help educate realtors and clients you know, how does the cooling system work? What are the details of it? Um, home management systems. It's got the green appraisal addendum in there, which can be used for the appraiser. Make sure all of your projects are getting a green appraisal addendum that you don't want to walk away without that. Um, and it's just got nice little descriptions on how, what are all these things? What do they mean? Most people don't have a clue what AFUE is or ACH50. What do you, you lost them, right? You start saying that stuff to a person who's not in our building science world and they're gone. So what is all this stuff? What does it mean? And so I really like how they help really describe these things and help people understand why, it, what it is and why it's important during the home sale process or, or you, you know, you name it. And then let's take a look at, um, the uh, ASHRAE 90.1. Um, again, the ASHRAE 90.1 program has all of these different rating software systems as we talked about, all these different tools. It's, you know, quite frankly, it's over my head. What I like is our friends at Enterprise Green Communities who we'll talk more about in the Comparing Green Buildings Program section, uh, webinar is that they have this nice little sheet that helps make sense of the ASHRAE modeling. And it might make sense to you if you do a lot of ASHRAE modeling, but I know the reports are pretty extensive, but they really like to bundle it down. So this is an Excel sheet they give you and you can drop in where energy is being used for each of these different se sessions. And then it will spit out you know, your total savings um, and emissions reports. And you can also do that by cost that we don't see that happen too often. And again, there's just some details here on um, what uh, you know, what uh, what the um, what the, the 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 you know what had happened to the building. So I really like how they put into that context. But you can just see what all the inputs are that go into these ASHRAE reports, cooling towers, um, 
common use ventilation things. All of these different items go in that go way above and beyond sort of the, the residential reports that again, make more sense on mixed use buildings um, and, and larger um, uh, 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 commercial buildings. So with that, I'm gonna switch over to um, Passive House here and, and zip back to that. And Lisa, kind of have you just briefly walk you through. We have a huge handout on, on, on the Passive House program, but you know, Lisa, maybe you can just briefly yes. walk us through um, what some of these reports are that we'll see um, when we're using Woofy. Sure. Yeah, so the one in the top left, um, it's pretty small in here, but uh, you can see those green little green boxes uh, that's showing your performance targets. So you have your specific space conditioning load performance targets, heating, cooling loads on an annual and peak basis. So that's showing you where you are against that target. Um, and then uh, in the middle, you can see like overall energy and source energy and site energy. Uh, so that does, that's kind of showing compliance. Um, and there's also a screen in the software that's also showing at all times, like where you are on those bars. Um, and then in the middle, you can kind of see those uh, blue and red charts. So that's showing losses and gains through the building. So I, I mentioned maybe at least in the chat that it's an energy balance. So you're balancing losses and gains, losses from the enclosure and from ventilation and then gains from internal gains and solar loads. So it, it just kind of stacks up here are your losses, here are your gains, and where they don't add up, you have to have supplemental heating or cooling. Um, so it can show each of those. And then here's the monthly site energy report. So the other slide showed kind of the overall energy use buckets, how much hot water, how much appliances, everything, how much heating and cooling. And then it breaks it down monthly. So if you are a homeowner, you can compare these values directly with your utility bills, which is, I think, pretty helpful to see, are you actually um, using that number of kilowatt hours or number of therms in your building as predicted each month. Thanks, Lisa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, again, you can just tell each of these rating softwares go into small amounts of details or heavy amounts of details. So what is it that you are trying to accomplish in your project or your client's project? You know, how much detail do you need? Do you need to be fast or can you slow down a little bit and really think through, um, you know, each of these items and you know what's being assessed in them and that's really the question you have to kind of answer to figure out which one makes the most sense um you know for your for your particular project i would also argue quality assurance plays a big role here because i think it's important that if we're going to go out and start rating a bunch of homes that we know that the rating is accurate there's all sorts of um unfortunate um frustrations out there about inaccurate ratings going on that sort of water the market down and make these rating systems to some extent less desirable or even laughable. Even people in the building science community who are great leaders, you know, make fun of some of these ratings because either they don't understand them or they've seen enough that go wrong. And so it's important to have strong quality assurance that we know that these things are being done right and being done accurately. So the Department of Energy has a 1% field audit, which is based on partner and not rater. So it's us as a partner, for example, have to go out and do quality assurance on 1% of all of our projects. So we might obviously go after the big the people who are doing a lot of ratings just to make sure that they're accurate. Um, and then the DOE has its own internal auditing and verification they do on all of their partners. Um, REMRATE has a uh, minimum 10% of all building input files uh, must be audited by the quality assurance directors. The quality assurance designee must independently field verify, like go out onto the field and verify 1% of all of the raters homes. So that's the difference between HERS index and home energy score is HES we're doing 1% of a partner's raters, all of them together, whereas HERS index is looking at 1% of one of the partner, you can, well, or the quality assurance, each of their raters have to be a 1%. Uh, ResNet staff also does enhanced quality assurance monitoring 50% of all rating providers each year through an online review and apparently goes out and do field site visits. I've never heard of that, but that's what they claim on their website. So they also do tracking QA reviews in real time and ResNet registry. 
So, you know, you can go onto that ResNet registry and um, you can see what all those ratings are. And then of course, Pearl, uh, my understanding of them, they do a desktop review only by the folks over at Pearl, no field QA. ASHRAE has, to my knowledge, no quality assurance whatsoever. People are generating ASHRAE models left and right and there's nobody checking that unless it's a part of a normal program like LEAD um, and, or other programs. Then it does have a quality assurance done. But to my knowledge, unless somebody knows something I don't, there is no quality assurance on ASHRAE. So uh, Lisa, can you tell us a little bit about the quality assurance program protocols for Passive House? I assume Woofy itself people can generate models and do yeah. whatever they want, but Passive House itself has quality assurance, right? Exactly. So it's a difference between, again, the tool and the certification program. So the certification has two parts to it, a design review, which is essentially looking at the Wolfie Passive modeling tool and making sure it, um, one, that it meets the planned building and two, that it's actually meeting the performance requirements um, the, uh, for the certification. And then there's also the, the field quality assurance and onsite testing. And so that is mostly those prerequisite programs you showed in that staircase, as well as additional requirements from FIAS. And there are some elements in there that are pass fail, like air tightness that you must test in, in the field. And also those inputs go back into your energy model. So there's some things you test on site. And then with those final numbers, you still have to meet the performance requirements in the energy model. So there's lots of QA throughout the process if you're getting certified. Thank you, Lisa. Um, why do this? incentives, codes, requirements, think of it this way. Um, if you're building the code, you're building barely legal, right? It's nothing to celebrate. We ask people, what's your energy rating for your project? Oh, I'm complying with the law. <laughs> I mean, how exciting is that? It's not very exciting, uh, but we hear that. And so, okay, if you're motivated to do better than just meeting the law, well, first of all, these programs are gonna help you do that and communicate those strategies to your clients. But more than that, um, the, the codes keep changing. And so you know, you're going to get caught off guard. So you should progressively use these programs to build better than code. So when the code does change over, you're ready to go and you don't have to worry about it anymore. So that's you know, what our argument would be. So again, ASHRAE 90.1, it's hitched to the International Conservation Code. So every time the commercial code gets stronger, which affects multifamily, because multifamily is typically commercial code permitted, you have a stronger 90.1 code, right? You have to follow the latest version of 90.1. Typically, you just need to comply with that year of 90.1, with whatever IECC baseline or whatever state adopted code it is. If you go, Usually, you don't have to be better than that. Um, if you want to pick up the 1790 tax credit, check that out with your tax advisor you must reduce your ASHRAE ratings to comply with that tax credit. That tax credit typically gets renewed every year. It's pretty popular among both parties. And there's no doubt it'll probably be renewed this year during the tax extender period and boosted if, if not. So again, uh, this ASHRAE program is real money on existing buildings using 179D. So check that out with your tax professional. If you're in the state of Michigan and consumers energy territory as just one example, um, you, can, uh, you can get, um, if you're 30 to 40% better than code using ASHRAE 90.1, uh, you can snag some utility dollars, $1.50 per square foot. Um, and I'm sure there's all sorts of other examples of that across the country. It's not just Michigan, it's just one that I know of. So there's money for these types of uh, things. Um, for the HERS index rating, a lot of states are adopting what we call the energy rating index or the ERI. The ERI is generated through Rev, uh, ResNet software, approved HERS index software. It's a sort of equivalent to the HERS rating. It's got slight variations to it. In the past, it was 100% the same, but now they're going off into different directions slightly. But again, you're using the same engine to generate this ERI which can help you comply with the building code in some states. The state of Michigan is an ERI state of Hawaii is an ERI. There's like 15 states in the union that use the ERI to comply with code. So again, code compliance, that's easy, but how do you show your clients you're building better than code? Well, that's how you, you can use the Hearst index rating easily to show that. 
by showing them what level you're getting in your designs. There's also something called 45L. We're talking 2000 bucks per unit in multifamily, 2000 bucks per single family home. Again, always friendly to both parties, usually always extended in the tax extenders. So you can check that out, $2,000 if you can uh, get a, 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 a better energy rating. And again, here in the state of uh, Michigan, our utilities are given out like upwards of $2,000 to $20,000 for achieving lower HERS index rating, plus a few other things. So there's, depending on what state you're in and utility you're in, there's money to be made um, by achieving these lower uh, ratings. What's also important to know for existing housing is that disclosure laws are coming. Portland, Oregon, here's a snapshot of Portland who's leading the country in disclosure laws. Every time a home sells, it needs to have one of these ratings on it, right? And so again, if you're doing a renovation project, either personally or for a client or even a new home, what is the rating on it? Because if it doesn't have a rating, it's going to need to get one eventually. And if it's a bad rating, is their home going to sell? Right now, it's a unique market, but it won't always be a seller's market. So eventually, you'll need better ratings to compete in the market. And that's what's going to be happening as cities like Minneapolis, who've adopted, adopted Truth and Lending, will have them on, like uh, in Vermont, uh, like another undisclosed city in Michigan, who I can't disclose right now. Uh, they're all going to have these laws on the books that they need to have these energy ratings during home resale. So, you know, the question is, um, are you ready for that? And these, they'll be easy to find because they'll all be posted on something called the green building registry. And so, um, super excited. We're going to be partnering with them and we'll be announcing that very soon. But look, here's Portland, Oregon. Here is all of the home energy rating scores. So across the country, every home that is receiving a home energy rating is getting listed here. And there's all these details on it. And if you zoom in, you can find what the rating is and um, when the rating was done and all that. And again, um, we're seeing home energy scores, which are of course required in Portland. Boom, you know, all over the place. And so this is, this is something you, you can use across the country. Uh, uh, you know, no matter where you're at, um, and, you know, zoom into like a, a city or a state, um, and see, you know, what, uh, kind of ratings are going on in that area. And so, uh, when you go to, when you go to buy a house, um, you will see, you know, uh, what, what's going on in that area and what the ratings are. And, and people will start asking question, you know, why doesn't my house have a rating? you know, what is that rating? And so that's going to be, I had a realtor call me up and say, you know, we're going to go sell this certified house. I can't find any information on it. Boom. I sent them here, had all the ratings on it. So this is a huge incentive to make sure you're rating all of your projects here, you know, from day one uh, to make sure that, um, you know, it can be, it can be disclosed. Um, so let's switch over back here again, real quick. And um, you know, Lisa, I don't tell me, is Passive House going to be uh, listed uh, on the registry at all? Uh, who is the host of that registry? Uh, Earth Advantage. Yeah. So we actually, they're, um, we're collecting that data for them and we are going to be listed soon. I think we're trying to make sure we can sign off on that, um, sharing that basically with our, our certified project clients. Right. But yes, they've reached out to us. So we will be part of that registry. Right. Oh, and then before I get to Passive House too, um, Pearl has its own sort of list online where again, you can go and see all of the Pearl rated homes. I know in the city of Holland, if you can score a Pearl gold, they will help uh, give you a rebate on your solar power system. So if you get Pearl gold and add solar, you get a rebate. So there are incentives. There's probably all sorts of Pearl incentives out there too if you can do that. Lisa, what are some of the um, passive house incentives that exist out there? Yeah, so um, this chart basically shows where there's incentives or like cash incentives. So a lot of these states you see on the far left have cash incentives for dwelling units that you certify to the FIA standard. Um, Illinois, ComEd actually, that's I think the only one in the Midwest right now. Um, ComEd just came out with a passive building pathway. And I think they give 
I don't want to actually quote the wrong numbers. They give cash per dwelling unit certified. Um, the middle is not really incentives, but you get additional points in the qualified allocation plans for affordable housing, which has driven a lot of passive projects across the country. And then there's just alternate compliance paths and codes and stretch codes, which is showed on the far right. Yeah, I'm really glad you brought up the QAP. You know, I, I'm hoping that we will see more funding through a, a QAP or low income housing tax credit um, program in the future uh, through all states. And so there are all these states that have green requirements for their QAPs. And so it's important to know that if you are working with developers who want to secure these low income housing tax credit funds, they are going to have to follow these energy ratings bare minimum green certifications, which we'll talk about next time, and Passive House. We just adopted Passive House here in Michigan. So we know yep. that it's coming. And so if we, we know we have an affordable housing crisis and shortage. So if you want to dip your toe into the affordable housing world and take advantage of it, you're going to need to know about one of these rating systems. They're going to be referenced um, no matter what. So, um, And then lastly, zero energy is becoming so popular now that these are these systems are the way that are going to get you to net zero energy and they're going to help you measure it in the design stage. And then they're going to help you communicate it and verify it in the final construction stage. So home energy score, basically on the home energy score, it tops out at a 10, but we know that you can go beyond that. So then you have to peel back a little bit and show that it's, you know, using zero energy. That's how you get to net zero using the home energy score. HERS index rating, having a, a, a HERS of zero or negative shows that you're a zero energy um, project. Um, ASHRAE 90.1, you just need to be 100% better to my knowledge of whatever rating you've, or whatever level you've picked. And in theory, that should be a net zero project. Um, Lisa, can you tell us a little bit how Woofy and then also Passive House are helping people get to net zero energy? Yeah, um, I would say just a general statement that passive house or passive building is kind of the most logical step if you are going to net zero. It reduces energy use significantly, again, focusing on passive and active strategies. So, you know, the insulation air tightness, but also better equipment efficiencies and things. So just as a general statement, we found that people going to net zero think passive house makes sense to do first. Um, you need less renewables to offset. Um, I can speak to the FIAS program. We do have a certification, FIAS zero, for if you go to zero. Uh, and you can do this basically by achieving all of the regular FIAS requirements and then adding renewables on or off site. They're weighted a little bit differently, but to offset your annual energy use with renewable energy. Great. Thank you. Um, so that's you know pretty much it. We gave you all a handout where you can go and click on some of these links and take deeper dives into each of these programs and learn a little bit more if there's one that you wanted to check out. Um, but again, thank you all for joining us. If you're looking, watching this on demand, make sure to take that 10 question quiz with an 80% passing rate. You can take that quiz on our Thinkific channel or USGBC channel or whatever channel this may be on in the future. Make sure to take that. Um, and uh, also for those of you listening live, check out certs at gutenbergcerts.com. They'll be looking in your inbox for that. And again, if you're pursuing your basics of residential green building and you're like, hey, you know, I understand the models now, but what goes into the models? That's where we covered that in part one, part two, and three. We got into the details of the prescriptive items that go into uh, each of these models. Lisa pointed out that for Passive House, they have this nice prescriptive checklist that I hope to be using to help people uh, make informed decisions on how to build to Passive House. So these are sort of the items you need to hit for the efficiencies of all the equipment. Once you complete your basics of residential green building program in this course and the two others we're gonna do, you can start making, uh, you have to certify one project. It can be a Green Star project, a LEED project, um, a Passive House project, it doesn't matter. You can just certify one and then you'll be a certified green home professional. So again, a huge thanks to um, our board of directors, all of our volunteers. Thanks for Lisa White from Passive House US Institute for joining us and all of our sponsors who allow us to do what we do. Um, we're gonna get into some questions and I know Lisa, you've only got a little bit of time with us. So I'm gonna start looking at some of the Passive House questions first. 
uh, before I spend any more time on PHC and how many training hours does it entail? So that's the certified past consultant training. It's roughly $2,000, which includes the full training and the exam. Um, and it's a two-part training, roughly 40 hours of on-demand stuff, roughly 24 hours of live instruction, including learning the Wolfie passive modeling. And then there's time to take the exam, which is a two-part exam. So you're looking at, I don't know, probably 75 hours all in all. It's a, it's a very intense, um, detailed training. Um, I think that's the only one I saw related to FIAS in this that I have not answered yet. But I could be missing some of them. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Thanks. Thanks for, for, yeah. And if there's any other questions we have, Lisa, just for a couple more um, minutes here, I'm just trying to see for the sake of the recording, um, if there were some really good passive house questions that we can make sure. And actually someone told me that they're probably, we actually may not be able to see the um, Q and a questions for the entire audience. So I was okay. just trying to look back and see um what else was here? Uh, someone asked about, you know, percentage of glazing. Um, if there's like maximum percentages you can have for glazing on the south wall or any walls. And I pointed out that again, at the performance path for both passive house programs, there's not prescriptive limits. It's all an energy balance. If you have more glazing on the south in a warm climate, you need lower solar heat gain. So it's all about uh, balancing the losses and gains in the enclosure. Um, with the FIAS prescriptive path, which I've mentioned a couple of times in the chat and the Q&A, it's a limited scope with single family and there are more limitations obviously and prescriptive kind of rest, uh, requirements or kind of a recipe. So there are limitations on glazing percentages just because you have to kind of box things in in order to be able to define a prescriptive recipe for, for passive house. So it is very limited scope, single family only and there's restrictions on form and glazing and all of that. Great, great. Um, do you all do uh, any I guess, deep dive trainings on your prescriptive path on people yes. who are trying to understand how to meet those items? Yeah, so I can give you first a free webinar link okay. um, to a webinar we already have. And then also we are, we just piloted our first prescriptive training at FiasCon last week, and we will have our first uh, professional training for it in probably in January online. Mm -hmm. So oh. the, go ahead. Well, uh, sorry, go ahead, no. No, that's it. I think. <laughs> okay. One thing I'm curious about is multifamily. Obviously, if people want to do multifamily, yeah. you know, we always look at multifamily as really just a single family home that you just take and copy out. And it just, you know, could you use, if you were just trying to see if you met Passive House and still, you know, you didn't have a CPHC hired or a rater, could you use the prescriptive to feel like you're getting close? Or would you say that's way off? I did, no, it would just be a little more conservative, I would say. Uh, okay. Multifamily, you generally don't need as much investment in the enclosure just oh, okay. because of the, the surface to floor area ratio of a larger building. Um, you could oh, get close. So it would be like if you met it, you'd be actually over maybe what you needed. But probably. Yeah, yeah, you'd probably be over investing. Um, and then there's also some limitations. The prescriptive path for FIAS is all electric. So then the equipment <laughs> choices and... Um, kind of ratings you might not be able to find for some, if you had like centralized or larger heating and cooling systems for multifamily, but in general, yeah. Yeah. You could get close. Yeah. Well, Lisa, um, I'm going to stick around for everyone else to ask some questions, but I know you're at your time and I really appreciate you um, joining us. I appreciate Passive House US Institute. There's no doubt Passive House, um, whether it be FI or FIAS, those are your top energy efficiency programs. There's no hiding it. So what we always say is aim for Passive House, no matter what you're doing, whether it's a renovation or a new build, just aim for it. And all you can do is fall back from there. But if you don't make it the goal, you'll never get really close at all to anything. So uh, I appreciate you taking time to walk us through this and how important it is that I think we have to step up our game and start in considering Passive House in every project we do. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, Brett. And just a, a closing statement. If you are trying to implement Passive House in projects, but don't want to learn the modeling software, this is really why we came out with that prescriptive path. So take a look at it, um, start implementing some of the practices in your projects, and you can gradually increase, you know, maybe you don't get the exact R value required, but you can look at some of the other best practices and um, 
it's supposed to be a more digestible way to start implementing these practices. So yeah. uh, feel free to reach out if you have questions. And thanks again, Brett, for having me in. Yeah, and thank you so great, much, Lisa. Take day. care. All right, yeah. thanks. Bye. Bye. Um, all right. So I'm just trying to look at a couple more questions that came in here today. Um, so yeah, it's just to be clear, the, the HERS index rating or the home energy score rating really is meant for existing housing stock. Um, it's meant to do a quick analysis of it to help get some informed decision making. It's the, the reason that it's, it's, it certainly can be used on new construction. And again, you as a builder or architect can go through easily and get the credential and use it and you should because you can then generate an energy model very quickly uh, that gives you some sense of how much energy the house is gonna use that we find to be accurate. But you might quickly become annoyed when you find that appliances and lighting and ventilation don't show up in the model. But the reality is appliances, lighting and ventilation really use so little energy. Um, I mean, once you start to build the passive house level, I guess they start to use more energy in comparison to the total. But really most of your energy is being used in the mechanical equipment and the shell, and then you, know, you can put in solar. So I think it's a great tool to use for existing. You're always gonna score 10. So you're always gonna feel good about yourself. Right, you're always going to win a 10 unless you've got a place that's using a code from the 1800s, but which there, I just learned there are some using <laughs> codes from 1980s still. Um, but anyway, you know, it's a great tool. You can score all your homes out in it. Um, it's just not tied to the building code anyway. Um, but, uh, you know, and the same goes for Pearl. You're probably going to score platinum on all new construction, but another great tool you can use to communicate the sustainability of your house in a very easy, um, very easy uh, way to do that. Um, there was a question about Energy Star 3 requiring contractors uh, to commit to only Energy Star builders. Um, yeah, so contractors for Energy Star 3 do need to go through a training um, and they need to be, um, they need to, um, become, uh, you know, they have to sign a form that they'll certify their projects. And then also the most important thing is HVAC contractors have to be certified. That's the biggest speed bump to Energy Star 3 is having the HVAC certified and go through the training. Um, so that's always, you know, concerning. Uh, and then there was a question about BPI Raider. So again, this is a session about scores uh, and ratings and BPI uh, is just an is just a training organization that helps you deliver scores and ratings, but it is not a score or rating software. So that is why um, uh, BPI uh, um, is 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 not mentioned here. But thank you for bringing that up. Uh, and I appreciate uh, the and I should have mentioned this at the beginning, but I forgot. So in California, Title 24 is a unified system that will handle the equivalent of the HERS rating on low rise and the equivalent of 90.1 on mid rise. So all of you who are in California are probably like, what is this foreign language he is speaking? ASHRAE 90.1 in HERS. Forget all of that. In Title 20 in California, you are all very lucky. And I hope it spreads to the rest of the country because you've got this Title 24, and I know you have your own opinions and thoughts on that, and you may disagree, but um, it is a unified tool that can be used for, there's a residential version and a commercial version of it, and even Leeds adopted it there. Um, and I think Energy Star has too, but, um, but it's basically your HERS rating in California, and it's your 90.1, all unified um, in one area. <laughs> Um, there's a question here about continuous review and compliance. And so that's a great question because um, these are one and done snapshot ratings and time. Uh, now the Energy Star program, if you're trying to get Fannie Mae or HUD financing does require that you continue to report energy use data. And so there is an Energy Star uh, portfolio manager 
program where you can continue to report Energy Star data and get your score based on the utility data. But other than that, none of these programs, these are all snapshots in time. None of them look at anything else um, beyond uh, you know, the one time rating. And they have nothing to do with, yeah, with occupancy either, so. Yeah, so the question here as a realtor, would you recommend um, getting trained uh, as a home energy score assessor? I think that's a really good idea. Um, I think as a realtor, you can, you can provide a lot more value. You know, you have the ability to almost play a sort of home inspector role to inform your clients. I mean, that's what you're doing. You're pointing out really cool features. Imagine if you just went in and scored the home too, and then you could explain to the client how you scored the home, what the rating is. Now, of course, as a realtor, you don't wanna show off things that are bad. So if you gave the home a bad score, you may not wanna talk about that, but people like transparency, even when it's negative information, I think. Uh, and so if they're like, you're being honest with me, this home has a bad score, but you're the only re realtor who's being honest with me. Well, that might go a long way than the realtor who just sort of swept the bad rating under the rug or didn't give the home a rating. So, I mean, that just really depends, but I think it's a good idea. You know, do you want to go out and buy a blower door? Or do you want to partner with a home inspector? You know, that's the question I think you have to ask. So. Uh, and then there's a question here. So yeah, um, the, the, the Green Star program uh, requires a home energy score of five or higher at a bare minimum. And there's a lot of uh, context to that, but we'll talk about that in the next session. And then also we'll have a full Green Star training as a component of um, 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 uh, um, uh, component of uh, what am I saying? As a component of the uh, uh, a certified green home professional designation. So, um, I uh, don't see any other questions in the Q and A. So uh, I do see a lot of chat though. So I'm happy to try to stick around um, and uh, um, take a look at. Um, those questions here and then just uh, end the session now for everybody else. But again, I wanna thank you all for joining us here for comparing the residential green building rating systems and scores. Um, for those of you watching this live, we're gonna be sending out the next two final classes. For those of you watching this on demand, they may or may not be complete and they will be all posted up on YouTube. And then eventually we'll have our entire certified green home professional course posted to our Thinkific platform where you can just go through everything all in one place and you won't have to go find this in scattered areas. So that's coming in the future. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Um, but I appreciate everybody for joining us and adding to the conversation with all the questions that you had and thoughts. And um, it's been a really good time. And um, well, if you have further questions or thoughts, um, send me an email or drop them into the comments box and be happy to continue the conversation from there. So uh, take care everyone, stay safe and be well. Be sure to check out all of our courses available online that you can watch anytime and anywhere to pick up your CEUs. Before you go, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube to get weekly updates and stay up to date on green building science courses, webinars, and home tours. Thanks again.